My name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Grandma. Oh, I love you too, Glamour Girls. Hi everyone, welcome back to Made with Love by Glamma. It's Tutorial Tuesday at Glamma's, yay! <laughs> Gonna learn another project. Um, to begin with, I'm going to start off by letting you know the nail polish color of the day. It's by Color Mates, and I believe I got it at Walmart. And it's called Little Blue Box, so that's what I'm wearing today in case you're interested. Um, it's like a Tiffany blue, and I'm sure that's why they named it Little Blue Box. This is actually the color of my bedroom too. Um, so yeah, I love living in a little Tiffany box. <laughs> Alrighty then. Today we're going to be making a granny square tissue box holder. A subscriber named Jacqueline has asked me to make a tissue box holder out of granny squares. She says that she's attempted it and that it hasn't come out right. So she asked me about a month or two ago, and I had never made a granny square up until about a month ago when I made that tutorial that's on my channel. Um, so I had to think about it as to how to make the top of the granny square tissue holder. I could have just done something simple like this and put this on the top with a slit in the middle, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have a true... Um, granny square tissue box holder on all four sides the sides and the top so i finally came up with um something that is a granny square for the top where you can have a nice big opening for the tissues to come out of and so i will show you how to do that um, in a minute but first what i'm going to have you do is i'm going to have you watch a tutorial that i made about a month ago when i learned how to make a simple granny square so i'm going to have you watch that first and um, after you watch it, or while you're watching it, um, you need to make four of those. So I've already made my four granny squares for the sides, and I, um, I've sewn them together. But in case you don't know how to sew them together, I left the last um, part to sew together on camera for any of y'all who don't know how. But what I was going to tell you is that um, what I did is I made a border of single crochets all along here, okay? So first off, I made a granny square with four rows. One, two, three, four rows. And then I did the border of single crochets. And on the, um, so I just put single crochets in all the stitches. And then when I got to the corner, I put three single crochets into the corner. And then I did one in the space. And then I put one single crochet above each of those double crochets, and then one, and then one above each of these three double crochets. And I did that all the way till I got to the corner, and then I put three in the corner, and, I, and that three is what helps it to turn so you can now do this side. So watch the tutorial and uh, then make four of these. My squares measure five and a quarter inch by five and a quarter inch. And then I will show you how I made the top. This is what I came up with for the top. Um, and it sits nice and flat. I had to frog it about four or five times yesterday um, when I finally sat down to attempt to make this tissue box holder um, because it was coming out wavy. It was coming out too wavy. So I had too many um, clusters of three on the sides. So I'll show you what I came up with to get it nice and flat for the top. Have a lot of fun making those squares. So what you'll be needing for this tutorial is yarn or um, what I'm using is 100% cotton yarn. So you can do that as well. An eye hook or a 5.5 millimeter, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle. Okay, so to get started, we're going to make a slip knot. Okay. And now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to join with the very first chain that we made. Join with the slip stitch. Okay, and now we're going to begin round one. So let's chain three. One, two, and three. And from here on out, this chain three, um, each time we start a new round, will count as a double crochet. 
Okay, so now let's make a double crochet, two more double crochet into this space by yarning over, inserting the hook, pulling it through two, pulling it through two more, and now let's yarn over again, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and so now that chain three is counting as a double crochet. So we have one, two, three double crochets, and now we're gonna chain one. I'm gonna scoot this over a little bit. And we're going to make three more double crochets into the space. One, two, and here's the third one. And now we're going to chain one and we're going to make two more of these. So we're going to have four of these little clusters in our first round. So let's make three more double crochets into the circle here. One. Two. And three. And then we're going to chain one and make three more double crochets into the space. One. Oops. Two. And three. Okay. And now we're going to chain one and we're going to join at the top of that first chain three that we made, okay? Join it with the slip. Oops, am I in the shot? Join it with the slip stitch. Huh, maybe you can join it with a slip stitch. I'm having difficulties. <laughs> okay, now chain three again. Actually, no, we're not going to chain three. What we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch till we get to that space right there. I almost forgot. So slip stitch into here. And now into here. And right into this spot right here. Yeah, there we go. It's hard to get in there. Especially, I'm working with cotton right now because the project that I'm going to teach you later um, with this granny square, I'm going to use cotton for it. Okay, so now chain three. One, two, three. And the reason I had you slip stitch is because we're going to work into this chain one space. So we had to get over here to the chain one space. Okay, so now let's double crochet into here. One, two, and so there's our three, our cluster of three. And now we're going to chain one and we're going to make three more double crochets. cute huh hey that looks like a little pineapple <laughs> okay chain one and now we're going to double crochet into the next chain one space that we made from the previous round oh I forgot to say this is round two which I'm sure you figured out <laughs> okay so let's make three double crochets into this space here's one here's two and here's three. And now we're going to chain one and we're going to make three more into that same chain one space. One, two, and pull up some more yarn. Okay. And here's our third one. Okay, so repeat this two more times um, into the next chain one space right there. We're going to 
double crochet three times into that space and then chain one and then three double crochets and then chain one and then do that same thing to the very last chain one space right there and then I'll meet you back here when you're done with this last space right there okay so I went ahead and made two more little clusters into each of those chain one spaces and now we're going to slip stitch and join at the top of that third chain that we made in the beginning okay and now we're going to do the same thing we did in row two and we're going to slip stitch our way till we get to the um, chain one space okay because that's what we're doing we're working in all the chain one spaces throughout this whole granny square yeah okay I can't see through the camera come on you can do it there we go <laughs> come on there we go okay now chain three two three and now we're gonna start round three and what you might want to do with one of your markers is just put a marker right here somewhere so that you know that this is the right side um, well it might not be important right now for practice but I know that later on when I make that project with you it'll be important to have the right side and the wrong side because it does look different see there's the wrong side and there's the right side so anyway um, chain two more I mean double crochet two more one two whoops what am I doing two and now so now I've got my three one two three because that chain counts as a double crochet so I'm going to chain one and get some more yarn and now I'm going to make three more double crochets into that chain one space okay there's three and now I'm going to chain one so right here in round three it gets a little different in round one and two we were just making these clusters into the corners of the you know in the chain one spaces which were only in the corners but now see there's a chain one space in this corner one in this corner and one right there so what we're going to do now is instead of putting chain I mean three double crochets chain one and three double crochets we're only going to put a cluster of just one little cluster of three double crochets in there so we just chained one and now we're going to double crochet three times into this chain one space I call it the sides you know these are the corners and these are the these are the four sides of the square so in the sides you're always going to only put three double crochets and then a chain one okay so here's my third one and I'm gonna chain one and now I'm gonna go to the corner chain one space and I'm going to make three double crochets hope I'm in the shot okay and now I'm going to chain one and because it's the corner I'm going to put another little cluster of three into that same chain one space I had never tried um, granny squares because um, I don't always like the look of them when different colors are used but for some reason I like it better when it's just a solid color but that's just my preference and I know that I'm the minority in that um because i know that a lot of people um use different colors in their granny squares so i know that i'm the minority and the unusual one <laughs> but that's just uh, that's just me um so the project that i'm going to make with you in a few weeks is going to be a solid colored um, granny square but you can do whatever you like if you're of the majority like everyone else that likes the granny square in lots of different colors then make your project as psychedelic as you want <laughs> and I'm sure I'll do that in the future but um, for this particular project that I'm gonna make in a few weeks it's just gonna be a solid color okay so now we're at the other side so what do we do that's right we only put three we chained one and we only put three 
double crochets into that. Just one cluster of three. Okay. Here's the third. And then we chain one because we're done with that side. Now we're going to go to the corner and make our uh, two clusters of three double crochets. So there's or two sets, I should say. There's one, two, and three. And then we chain one. And the reason we put two um, clusters of three into that space is because that's what helps it turn and that's what makes it into a corner. So here's another set of the three clusters. Two and three. And chain one. And here's a side because there's only there's uh, there's one there and then there's the corner there. So because it's the side, we're only going to put one cluster of three double crochets in there. One. Two. And three. I was just thinking about it. Um, chain one. I think the reason I don't like all the colors in granny squares is because it, it looks too busy for my taste. I like more simplistic, um, elegant, um, I don't know, dainty looking stuff. And when it's too contrasty, it, it just looks a little busier to me. So I like things to look soft and pretty and simple. <laughs> but that's just me, like I said. Okay, so now we already chained one and now we're at the corner again. So we're going to put two clusters of three double crochets into that space. Two. And three. Chain one. And now to start rounding out this corner, we put another cluster of three double crochets. Two. And three. Chain one. And we're back to a side. There. See? It's cute, huh? <laughs> so yarn over. Put, whoops, put three double crochets into that side space. Three, and now we're going to chain one. And as usual, we're going to count up three chains and we're going to slip stitch into that. And now we're going to start round four. And I'm going to probably let you go at this point because now you know how to make a granny square. Um, because now you'll see that there's the four corners. One, two, three, and four. And now instead of just one chain one space on the sides, um, we made two of them. And then as we go in this row, we're going to end up with three chain one spaces on the side and the corners. So as you make your square bigger and bigger, you're going to end up with the four, four corners, of course, but you're going to end up each time with more chain one spaces on the sides. And so don't forget when you're in the corner, you, um, you put three double crochets and then a chain one and then three double cro crochets and a chain one and then you only put three double crochets in there and then you chain one and then three and then chain one and then you repeat the corner like you've been doing all the other corners but just in case you forget whenever you um join to close a row you always slip stitch your way whoops to the very first um chain one space okay so don't forget that step get in there see i always have problems with slip stitching i have no idea why i just do maybe i maybe i crochet too tightly the slip stitch and then you're going to chain your three and then you're going to start your corner clusters okay you're three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, and then you're going to do the sides. Okay, so go ahead and make as many rows as you want. Make your square as big as you want. Um, just keep in mind, like I said, that the more rows you make, the more 
um, chain one spaces you'll have on the sides, okay? Alrighty guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, of the simple granny square. I should call it glammy square <laughs> for glamma square. <laughs> Okay, so now that you have your four granny squares, I'm going to show you what I did to um, sew mine together. Um, what you want to do is you want to put the right sides together, so the, the wrong side would be facing you. Um, and so you do this for each of the ones you connect, okay? So I connected two, and then I connected the third one onto the second one, and the fourth one onto the third one, and now I'm going to close it. But this is the same way that I did all the other all the other ones that I um, sewed together. So what I did first is, you know those three um, stitches, single crochets that I put in the corner? What I did is I took a marker and put it on the middle one of the three right here. And then I found the middle one of the three over here, of the three stitches over here. And I pinned that together so that I would know where I wanted to start sewing and I made sure that each of the stitches were lined up okay so make sure they're all lined up that you have the right amount of stitches um, so you can so that it's it doesn't end up crooked like this okay so make sure that you've got all the stitches across from each other and then I went to the bottom edge and I did the same thing I found the three in the corner and I took the one in the middle and then I went to the other side and found the one in the middle and I pinned it together and I actually wanted um, mine to have the seam showing right there um, on the corners you see what I'm talking about the seam I wanted that I didn't want it to just look like this because I didn't like how that looked so I actually like how it looked with the seams right there and how I did that is like this and I'm sure all of you seasoned crocheters know but for any of y'all that are new is okay I'm gonna take this out now that I know where it's at okay okay so what I did is you've got your V's or what I call V's whoops where am I okay there's that side of the V and then there's that side or that loop and then that loop so that's the inner loop that's the outer loop and what I did is I took the outer loop of this side and then the outer loop see there's the inner loop and there's the outer one and the outer loop of that side and so that leaves the inner loops together and that's what shows the little um, stitch detail on the corners and I kind of like that so that's what I'm going to do so go ahead and just make whip stitches um, and make sure they stay lined up make sure your stitches are lined up okay so see there's the inner loop and the inner loop well I'm gonna grab the outer loops okay but you do however you want if you like the other look better then go ahead and do it however you feel you want to do it so don't forget you've got to put your two right sides inside there and the outs the wrong sides are facing you okay okay so just go ahead and do that whip stitch all your stitches together okay till you get to the other end and uh, then just um, make your little knot there, weave your tail in, and that should do it. And I'll meet you back here and show you how to do the top of our tissue box holder. Okay, so here I am at the end, and I'm just going to make a little knot. In case any of y'all didn't know what I was talking about when I say a knot, just go like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weave this tail in over here see I'm just gonna go through these stitches right here but don't go to the inside just get the upper part of the stitch okay and just weave your tail in go as far as you'd like okay I think I'm not gonna go too far I think I'll just go to there and then what I like to do is I like to go back the other way just to ensure that it's not going to come apart on me. So don't go right back where you just came out of. Skip that one and go right back into here. Because if you were to go that way, you would be pulling it all the way out. You would be undoing it. So skip that one and go to the next stitch and go underneath it. Okay. There we go. And now at this point... 
you can go ahead and uh, and cut your cut your yarn because now you know it's not going to unravel because you have a knot there I have two knots actually I put two knots there and then I went this way and then went that way and now you can cut it and you can be um, sure that it's not going to come undone there we go all right, so now we've got all that put together. Let's turn it inside out for now, just so you can kind of see what's happening here. So there's one side, there's the other side, and here's, here we go, there's our little square. And like I said, it might be a little bit loose, but I didn't want it too tight either. Um, and it was it would have been too tight the other way. Another thing that maybe you could do um, depending on how you crochet. I crochet kind of tight. So um, maybe what I could have done, maybe on this last row, I could have um, made this double crochets and then this, instead of single crochets, maybe a slip stitch if yours is coming out too loose. Um, because I don't know how you crochet, if you crochet loosely or, or tight or what. So okay, now that you have that, go ahead and put that aside for now. We're gonna learn how to make the top of the granny square tissue box holder. And so here's mine. And so go ahead and uh, get some more yarn and let's get started. Okay, so I grabbed a different color since mine is already all made. I'm just going to grab a different color to show you for demonstration purposes. So, okay, let's go ahead with a slip knot. Okay, and what I did is I chained 15. The first time I think I chained 18 and that was way too big. And then I chained 10 and that was way too little. So I think 15 is a good number. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And go ahead and just do that till you have 15. Okay, so now that you have your 15, um, I Make sure you don't twist your chain because we're going to connect it right here. I went ahead and connected it to my very first chain that I made, whoops, and uh, made a slip stitch right there, okay? Um, another thing you could possibly do is use a magic ring. And so now what I did is I chained up three, one, two, and three and that's going to count as a double crochet and if you want you can incorporate your tail as you're going along make a double crochet into the ring and then another and there's our first cluster of three so this is going to be our corner, okay? So now, because we're doing a corner, let me slide this over. Um, we're going to chain one, and we're going to put three more. There's one. There's two. And there's the third one. Okay, so now I'm going to take my stitch marker and put it right here where that space, where that chain one space is, just so that I don't get confused, because we're just gonna be making a bunch of clusters of three, okay? So this is for one corner. We had to make two clusters of three for the corner. You know, just like that. Because that's what you do for corners. You put two clusters with the chain one. So go ahead and um, <clears throat> now make another two clusters of three for this corner, and then another two clusters of three for this corner, and then another two clusters of three for that corner. So basically you're gonna repeat what we just did three more times, okay? So now what you're going to do, if you don't know how to get started, or you can just rewind it, is now that we're done with that third double crochet, chain one, and I'll make three more double crochets, then chain one, and then three more. And if you want, you can put a stitch marker um, right there in that space if you want to know exactly where your corner is. Alrighty guys, go ahead and do that and I will meet you back here. Okay, I'm almost finished. There's my 
four corners and I'm almost finished. I just need to make one more double crochet, but I thought I would come on camera and do it with y'all. Okay, and now we're gonna chain one and now we're gonna connect with a slip stitch um, at the third chain up. One, two, three of the very first chain that we made. Okay. So there's our slip stitch and there's our ring and now you can go ahead and if you incorporated your tail as you were going along you can go ahead and just um, trim that down so that it's not in your way okay and there we go so now just like the um, other tutorial where I showed you how to um, make a granny square now we're going to slip stitch our way to that first chain one space. I dislike doing slip stitches because for some reason when I'm on camera it takes me forever to do it. Oh these are coming out pretty easy though. Okay <clears throat> let me take out this marker and what I was doing in the other tutorial is the way I was doing slip stitching into the top of those stitches. I was trying to go into that little, to that little space, but instead what I'm doing now is I'm just going right through that space instead and then slip stitching and then chaining up three. Okay, and so now you're going to make your two more double crochets. And that's going to count as one as well. Okay, so now you're just going to keep doing this just like you did the rest of the um, of the granny squares. So there's, this is going to be our corner. Let me do one whole side with you. So there's our three and then there's our space. Let me untangle my yarn. And I believe I did three rows of this, okay? So this is our second row. Okay, so there's our, there's our third one with the chain one. So basically when we made the first round, we didn't put any um, clusters of three for the sides because that's what I did wrong on the very first ones. I remember I told you I chained 18 and then closed it. Well, what I did is I did the corners and then I put two clusters. I, I put a cluster of three and then chained one and then another cluster of three. Well, I did that for like four rows and it was coming out all wavy and like, ugh. So I frogged it and then I did it again and I put the corners in. So the two clusters with the one in the space, I put the corners in, but I put one cluster of three in the middle thinking, okay, I'll reduce it by one cluster. So I put one cluster on the side and it was still wavy and I had gotten all the way to the third or fourth row because I wanted to see maybe as I go on it won't be wavy but nope it still was so I frogged it and finally I said you know what just do the two clusters for the corner don't put any for the side and then just do just do corner clusters and let's see what happens and it worked yay see see how nice and flat that came out finally <laughs> Okay, so now, see, we are going to make a side cluster because now we've got the two corners there and now we've got another space there. So we chained one and now we're going to put three in this space. Okay, so there's our three. So now we have a side cluster. We chained one and now we're going to go into this space where the corner is and we're going to put two clusters of three. But we're gonna separate the two clusters with the chain one. Let me take out my marker. I think the reason I was putting the markers is because yesterday when I, like I said, when I put the corners and then the two clusters, 
all I, when you looked at it, all you saw was a bunch of clusters of threes. And I'm like, oh my goodness, now I got to figure out the corners and everything. And so I, I didn't want to mess up. So I put the markers on the corners. Um, this one wasn't so bad because you know that there's two for the corner and then two. But before there was like two for the corner and then two clusters, two other clusters, and then these two clusters. And eh, rather than get confused, I just put markers on there. So there's our second one. Here's our third one. And there's our spacer, our chain one. And now we're going to put three more for the corner. Let me untangle my yarn. Okay, here's the second one. And the third one. And now you're going to chain one. And now you're going to go into that space, making another side cluster. And you're just going to do this all the way around, just like you did your four um, granny squares. The only difference was the center. Okay, so do this for a second row and then a third row. And then you're going to single crochet all around the border if you want. And then meet me back here and we'll both try to figure out how to put it onto the sides because I haven't attempted it yet. <laughs> So I'm going to figure it out with you. <laughs> Alrighty guys, have fun. Okay, so I'm back and like I said, I tend to crochet kind of tight. So if you're finding that my um, that my pattern is too big, you know, cause measure it against the sides of your tissue box. If, if you um, crochet looser or whatever, my, what I said to do might be too big. Um, so you might want to not put that single crochet border in, which I'm sure you figured that out if yours is looser. Um, okay, so now this is the right side, and I'm going to turn it inside out. At least, like I said, I've never done this, so I'm just, it's trial and error with me here. This is the wrong side too, so yeah, I want the wrong side facing up. That's the wrong side, that's the wrong side. Okay, and so now what I'm going to start to do... Remember how we did the three? I'm going to find the third one in the middle. And I'm going to try to find the third one in the middle of that. And I'm going to do that to all the corners. And uh, so just pin yours together. And then let's just sew it up there. But go ahead and pin yours first. And then I'll do one side with you. Okay. And now I'm going to do that to this side. Alrighty, guys. See you in a bit. Okay. So I guess I should have said this. Um earlier on when you finish your um, top part of the um, granny square leave yourself a long tail so you can use that to stitch all the way around it but hopefully you're watching this video all the way through before you started I do that I watch um, the tutorials that I want to learn from all the way through and then I start my project so my thread ended up over here so even though this is the corner I'm gonna start over here and then I'll finish off over there all right, so I need to make sure that I've got my stitches lined up. So those will get sewn together. Those will get sewn together. So I have to sew where I ended there along here. Okay, that's where I'm starting. Boy, I left an extra long tail, didn't I? Probably too long. Okay. And so now just go ahead and find all your outer loops or inner loops, whichever you're using, and whip stitch this puppy together. <laughs> okay, so just do that on all four sides. This side, this side, this side, this side. If you're finding that yours is too loose, maybe on the bottom, what you can do is you can put, you can chain yourself a long chain drawstring, and you can drawstring it, um, you can weave it in through here and you can make a drawstring to tighten it and then make a little bow. That's a that's a option that you could do if yours is coming out too loose. And I'm thinking that I might put a flower on mine with some leaves, but I probably won't do that on camera. I just wanted to give y'all the basics of how I figured this one out and then y'all can embellish it however you want. Okay guys, go ahead and uh, whip stitch yours all the way around and then I'll meet you back here to say goodbye to y'all. 
Okay, so I'm finished with mine. I sewed my top on and I embellished mine with a little butterfly. You can put whatever you want on yours or you can just leave it plain. I made mine in a solid color and then I just put a butterfly on there and that's what it came out like. So that's it. Now I have a, a granny squared tissue holder for my living room. All right, guys. Um, and Jacqueline, um, this tutorial was for you since you're the one who wanted me to make this granny square tissue box holder. I hope this is what you were thinking about or that you like this one well enough. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me here at Made with Love by Glamma, where everything here is always made and taught by me with love. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching our Glamour's channel. channel.